Well, it's been a beautiful weekend uh, filled with many activities. Uh, catching up with family, friends, loved ones, you know how it is. Yeah. And trying to get some rest as well. Of course. Good morning and welcome to another exciting Monday edition of your premium breakfast show, Wake Up Nigeria. Yeah. Mm. Things are looking good uh, as we approach the end of the month. Uh, today's one. Oh, wait. The 20th, right? Yeah, yeah, 20th, meaning we're almost there. Hmm. Almost, uh, almost, we're closer to the shortest month of the year. <laughs> Let's put it well, that is way. Is it the shortest month? Yeah, February is the shortest month. We're yeah, I'm curious to... what Topper thinks about this whole thing. <laughs> okay. She, she looks happier mm. than yes. we are, that uh, January is coming to an end. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> I managed to go through the year of January, so I'm proud of myself. Wow. Good, good, good. Excellent. We will survive. We will <laughs> make it we? through. Of course, Monday, of course, we, we describe as the most constructive, uh, constructively busy day of the week. So I guess you'll get with the program quickly with us. Yeah, as quickly as possible. My name is Titi Laya Oyinson. My name is Yomi Oupe. We're streaming live, so uh, join us online at tvcentertainment.tv and on Facebook at TVC Connect. You can also send in those comments. Use our hashtag WakeUpNigeria as soon as you can on all social media platforms. Mm. Now, of course, uh, our app is also available. You can download it both on the iOS and the Android stores mm. and watch us anywhere you are. So this is where we tell you everything is going to be happening on the show. We have quite a bit packaged for you. Mm -hmm. And uh, for the latest in the world of technology, uh, Mike is going to be giving us some um, interesting updates. <laughs> and for our first musical performance on the show, we have multi-talented artist known for his impressive dance moves. Yes, and for our second musical performance on the show, we have Afrobeat artist with a unique style of lyricism, Cyclodine. <laughs> Too much talent in this country, I tell you. Amazing. Uh, certified neurolinguistic practitioner Bolu Atife David joins us uh, for motivation to talk about moving from potential to performance using the focus code. Then we have seasoned motor mechanic Yomi Bosude. They'll be joining us on our auto segment to talk about things to do while driving alone. Very key. Mm. How about some plantain chips? <laughs> Poet and spoken word artist Cephas will be joining us uh, to perform Gentleman Street Urchins. This is what we breakfast for morning at the my clean where we take brush teeth. And the only time Shawama. Joining us for SME is Olua Femi Okpeolua of Olua Femi Clothings, a menswear fashion brand that manufactures retail, retail clothes for working class people. Mm. <coughs> I was stifling a giggle there. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Good morning. You should not jinx January. Why? 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 Yeah, see, 11 more days. You are shouting it, I send it, I send it. <laughs> oh, Before that 11 days now seems like 11 weeks. Oh, wow. It, was, it, it, it has no way dead. It's still, <laughs> it's, you know, to be honest, yeah. yesterday I was thinking, and then I'm like, ah, how many more days? Then I went to mm. check the calendar, and I realized I have like another full week, and I was like, wow. Yeah, full week yeah. plus. Yeah. Cool. I had a friend who was in Qatar, and, she's, and she, she was used to be in Nigeria, and then she was like, wow, January, man. Mm. Very, very sweet month. I'm like, come. You are missing your Nigerianness. <laughs> in Nigeria, it is part of the constitution that you have to complain about January. <laughs> you just have to. If it's, if it's not school fees, you have to complain yeah, about something. something. If you don't complain about something. January, then let in, your Nigerianness is in yeah, doubt. It's gone. It's so, doubt. as in, like, so I, I know that um, is the month where family members call you and remind you how much they love you and ask you for things. <laughs> it's the month where the school calls you and reminds you that you're one of their favorite parents, you know? Why? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there's some schools. Yeah, there's some schools like there's that. There's some schools that are great. Your, your hair salon reminds you, oh, you know, they yeah, send you messages. Ah, happy <laughs> and then you get loads of prayer messages. Oh, goodness <laughs> me. January, January is, a, is a packed month. I yeah. mean, it, it has, uh, <laughs> so there's the the spiritual side of it. You know, some churches do their 21-day fast, the fast, all of that, 21 yeah. day fast and 30-day yeah. fast and all 49 that. 49 days. Mm. Why 49? Ah. 
I don't... 49 days? Yes. Ah, oh, okay. Wow. You want to do 49? Why 49, Mike? Ah. 50. <laughs> <laughs> are you about to open your church? Oh, yeah, there's, there's something about know that, um... sim symbolic about 49. Oh, okay. Wow. <laughs> okay. There's, there's, there's a symbolism too. to it. Yeah, I know that women to women in my church, women to women, uh, you know, ministry are doing that. 49 days? No, they're doing 21 days. Oh, my church days. is doing okay. 21 You days. should clap yeah. for me. Yeah. I have deprived myself wow. of food. <laughs> so, dear God, this is like a public <laughs> announcement. Yeah, I did I like it. Yeah. Today is today is what? Are you keeping? Are you you you're, you're, you're doing every single day? Keeping every score. single day. Wow. I have well deprived done. myself of food and other things that I like, mm. like so what, watching what TV. What have you been eating? Oh wow. And I deprive myself of food to a certain hour. Well, hey, hey, yeah. now you are. <laughs> see that clarification was so needed. Yeah, because hour. I thought it was a hunger strike. <laughs> that was dry. Like <laughs> <laughs> I'm not fighting the world. So I, that, so I think of people that go on hunger strikes, either in um, jail or something, and they think, okay, so. I'm not going to eat until my government does this thing. Hey, yeah. Wow. So I'm going to get. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, you don't have food in your house. And you know what happened? You all keep the food right inside like that. I say, don't worry. You all bring it morning, afternoon, night. If they take it away. The one that makes me laugh is when kids abroad do it. They tell their parents they're not eating. Until what? And the parents now be begging them. Eat hey, now. Yeah. Eat now. <laughs> Oh no no, we we kids we kids is, is it's very simple. Just you know ignore what? them for a few hours. Are you sure about that? No, we ignore, ignore <laughs> them. For, even in child psychology, that mm. that's how it is. Mm. So instead of forcing a child to eat, mm. just ignore. But make sure that they don't eat between meals. Mm. Once you ignore, they'll come back and eat the food. They'll come back. But that no food matter be what cold. it is, whether it's a bow or rice. Eat it your friends. Ah, <laughs> it's really nice. Thank you for not eating. Oh wow. Okay, but it's 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 you know so. I, I wanted to mention this issue of global warming. I, mm. There's a reason why I'm going to, because I saw some pictures online of flooding in Dubai. Mm. Mm. And I was like, what? This is the desert. And, and <laughs> so it, it, the, these there's are a hashtag pictures. Dubai floods. There's a hashtag oh, wow. of the streets of Dubai flooded with water. So I think cars, a, vehicles, Bentleys, Ferraris. Yeah, I, think, I think for that one, I, mm. maybe they you had know? an issue with managing the water or you know, maybe maybe, yeah, it, maybe so it there was an or issue something. something broke up somewhere it wasn't what? because we didn't hear about dubai rains it yeah. did no it did it, it, it rained, rained but it wasn't yeah. like so serious so i saw i also saw those yeah. mm -hmm. pictures okay I didn't, but i think I didn't it was an issue of mismanagement so, so the issue was oh even dubai that should be advanced enough mm. to yeah. manage um, waterways and drainages yeah. Yeah. they even have issues so speaking speaking of hashtags um last night just last night uh, hashtag Abu Lebo was trending, mm -hmm. and it was that because was, of a pipeline explosion, and you know, I mean, Very devastation. Sad. I heard that several houses have been burnt and all of that, and that's of, of course one of the things that we're going to be talking about on the news, uh, the news headlines uh, this morning with yeah, Ibrahim. Right. I just want you guys to know that the flood in Dubai is different from the flood in any other part of this world. That's what you should know, because if it's flooding in Nigeria, it's a different ballgame yeah. entirely. Guy. All right, straight ahead to the news. We begin this hour with reports of a multiple fire outbreak at Fagba and a coral road, uh, Lagos, that occurred on Sunday evening. The cause of the fires are yet to be determined, but the Lagos State Emergency Response Agency says it has activated the state emergency response plan. The teams are said to have been mobilized to both incident sites. An eyewitness says the explosion occurred at about 10 minutes after residents called Lasema to report the smell of petrol. The inferno spread fast to a residential estate named Igoke around the Ilepo area and residents have deserted the area. The extent of damage is yet to be ascertained. Still, uh, the Nigerian army says it has arrested a suspected gun runner in the state and retrieved 10 locally made rifles from him. 50-year-old Ahmed Mohammed was arrested by troops of one division uh, deployed to Operation Well Punch. The suspected arms dealer was intercepted on his way to Pandogari in Niger state to deliver the weapons to one Unisa Madaki uh, bandit on the wanted list of security agencies. Mr. Mohammed is also accused of supplying weapons to bandits and kidnappers terrorizing people in Beninguari local government area of Kaduna State. The Southwest Security Outfit, codenamed Amoteko, has received the backing of the PDP presidential candidate in the last general election, Atiku Abubakar. In a statement issued, the former vice president noted that the policing 
administration has been stretched to its limits, thus the need for state community input to address the rapidly growing challenges of insecurity and crime. He said, quote, it is obvious that current levels of insecurity in the country are giving rise to major initiatives such as Amoteco and the issue need not be controversial in the first place. When local police structures are closest to the grassroots, emergency response will be more effective than the current unwieldy uh, uh, chain of command that renders local government chairmen ineffective when their people are under attacks, unquote. A bit of politics now. The Imo State Governor, Herb Uzodema, insists his administration has no intention of probing his predecessors in office. The governor, who debunked rumors that his administration wants to probe his predecessors, said he only directed the Accountant General of the state to give him the financial statements of the state. Mr. Uzodema, while inspecting some facilities in government house, says he has come to deliver good and qualitative governance to the people. Well, when I asked for this uh, status report from all the ministries, many people misunderstood it or assumed that the purpose for calling for that information is because I want to prove. I never said I'm going to prove anybody. But the business of governance also involves probing if need be. So I needed those information because you can see there's no official handover from anybody. And for me to start the work, I need to know what is on ground. Now, the federal government has approved the use of a new test, a test kit to detect, the monitor HIV, detect and monitor HIV infection to ensure that the spread of the HIV virus is drastically reduced. The test kit, which also monitors a patient's response to antiretroviral therapy, will be available for purchase and use in hospitals across the country. Health Minister Dr. Sage Hanure says the person who tests negative is counseled on how to stay negative, while a person that tests positive is immediately linked to antiretroviral therapy services. The well coordinator, IRON, of National AIDS and STI and Hepatitis Control Program, Mr. Araoye Shegilala, says uh, CD4 rapid test kits will be very useful in advanced HIV care. And President Buhari has visited, visited the Prince of Wales, Prince Charles, in Scotland. The visit comes ahead of the inaugural UK-Africa Summit built to start uh, on, uh, today. The summit, which is hosted by the British Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, is expected to bring together African leaders, init uh, international business chief executives and heads of international organizations, President Buhari and his delegation will also have bilateral meetings with Prime Minister Johnson, as well as heads of multilateral organizations. To the United Kingdom, where the Duke, and, uh, Duke of Sussex says he's taking a leap of faith in stepping back from being a, so a senior royal, saying there really was no other option. Speaking at an event on Sunday evening, Prince Harry said he and Meghan had hoped to continue serving the Queen, but without public funding. It was his first speech since the couple said they wanted to stand down from being full-time working royals. But the prince said he wanted to, take, uh, to make it clear he and Meghan were not walking away. Earlier this month, Prince Harry and Meghan said they intended to step back as senior members of the royal family and work to become financially independent. That's it on the news update for this hour. It's time to let you know what the weather will be like today. wondering if Mike had some color blindness or something like blue me blue no no <laughs> what are you red <laughs> <laughs> I am red yes not blue but I won't say which red uh, we will be heading over to the headlines right now though uh, we have the punch newspaper starting us off 
Operation Amotekun. We're not targeting any ethnic group, Southwest governors allay fears. Go ahead, let federal government go to court, Afe Babalola tells governors. At the top of the page there, it says 20 food items, including pads, others, to get VAT exemption. I know that uh, milk and poultry and some other mm -hmm. foods like that are, are on that list. Uh, it says here, PDP, APC, go spiritual as Supreme Court decides Shokoto, uh, Benway, Kano, Bauchi polls today. We foresee danger, Bauchi elders say. Kano PDP members fast and pray. Uh, Buhari, Songolu, Makinde, others mourn, eulogize Are. Uh, it also says uh, 17 soldiers killed, scores abducted in fresh Boko Haram attack. 20 coaches arrive for Lagos, Ibado, Abuja, Kaduna train services. Moving to beside the photo story here, it says, uh, my re-election is certain, declares Obaseki. Meanwhile, Leki Ikoi Bridge full cashless toll begins today. Uh, it says Leah is around Lake Chad, says released play to aid worker. Two dead, two dead houses burnt as pipeline explodes in Lagos. And uh, finally, on Imo, uh, PDP protests alleges Supreme Court's manipulation demands CJN sacking. That's what we have on the cover of the punch. Well, yeah, let's take a look at the Daily Sun. Uh, this Monday, uh, Supreme Court decides Gober elections in six states. Anxiety grips Tambowal, Ganduje, Autumn, others. And supporters besiege mosques in Bochi and Sokoto. And groups, CSOs call for calm. And that's really, really important. Everybody should be calm. The South South elders insist on 2023 presidency. And protesters ground Imo for Ihedioha. Uh, kick against Supreme Court ruling. Kidnapped seminarian, five others freed in Kaduna and Delta. And truck crushes 12 passengers on Obomosho Ilori Road. Finally, Amotekun, protest rally to hold in Southwest states tomorrow. Governor's action on security outfit legal, necessary, says Afe Babalola. That's what we have on the cover of the Daily Sun. We have the Guardian newspaper as well. And it says here that uh, confusion as submarine cable cuts slows internet. Banks, business transactions suffer. Operator apologizes, says problem resolved. Now the uh, story starts on the cover there and wraps up on page six. Just below the masthead there, it says Commonwealth Solidarity offers enormous benefits to Africa, Buhari declares. Atiku supports Amotekun, fault central security architecture. Diseases may soon become untreatable due to lack of new antibiotics. I'll leave big shoes for my successor, says Dixon. Uh, tension in Kano, or uh, yes, Kano, Bauchi, ahead of Supreme Court's verdict today. Ganduje Kwankwaso camps predict victory for selves. Imo. Abia PDP protests against Ihedioha's removal. That's what we have on the cover of The Guardian. Mm. The Vanguard's got uh, another story on Namotekun. We won't succumb to blackmail, Southwest governors say. And uh, it's neither a regional army nor ethnic agenda. It's Southwest's tribal militia to bring about Oduduwa Republic. <laughs> Junaid Mohammed says, you are not court of law. Take the governors to court, Afe Babalala tells Malami. And Southwest Monarchs, state assemblies should pass operational laws, Ari Adam says, and Amatakun can make a mar Nigeria. Ata wades in. And a few other stories uh, at the bottom here. Sanitary pads among 20 basic items exempted from 7.5% uh, VAT. And Serap asks Abuja court to stop payment of life pensions uh, to council chairs and speakers. Access Bank secures regulatory approval to acquire transnational bank in Kenya. And uh, up here, Leah Sharubu is alive. Jennifer Freed UNICEF staff says, and we're developing intermodal transport to support economic growth. And no progress in fight against Boko Haram. EU says. 
And that's what we have on the cover of The Vanguard this Monday. And with that headline, we have to take a quick break. Talkware will be giving us the traffic reports when we come back. Welcome to the traffic updates uh, on a Monday, the 20th of January. Now, uh, you know, across the city of Lagos is Monday. So, of course, you know what to expect. It's going to be quite busy uh, in many different locations. And I've got my, my guys in the kitchen who are on standby with uh, supporting... You're going to, you're going to read course. that traffic. Yeah. <laughs> Always. Yeah, traffic. <laughs> read Always. That traffic. Yeah. Okay, so uh, now if you're leaving Magodo Shangisha, that's the area we're in, and you're going straight to Victoria Island, and I'm talking about um, around like Barbie Jeko Hotel area, it's going to take you an hour and 45 minutes. That's not too shabby uh, because it's 6.30 already, and you know it's, it's quite busy. So the major area where you would experience traffic this morning, like really major traffic, is from Owuru to the entire Thurmanland Bridge. So it's very, busy, very, very busy right now. So the bulk of your journey will actually be on the Thurmanland Bridge. After that, it's free. And before the Thurmanland Bridge, is actually not too bad uh, across uh, the, entire, the entire express. And, and that's, uh, that's pretty uh, surprising. Ojota, you know, on the bridge is free. Um, all the major bus stops uh, across uh, that axis uh, are also, well, not too bad until you arrive uh, yeah, okay, well, Bagada is quite busy right now. Uh, Ogudu is also slightly busy, not too bad, but, you know, very, uh, it's getting heavier. It's getting heavier. So all the way from Bagada all the way to, to Owuru, it's quite busy. And then the Third Mainland Bridge itself, uh, pretty busy. Uh, and that is the fastest route. So uh, the Third Mainland Bridge, even though it's one hour, 41 minutes, is actually the fastest route for you uh, this morning. So... Uh, if you want to leave the house, you should probably do that immediately. Now, I'm going to find out what's happening in other locations uh, in Lagos right now. If you are coming from, say, Bega, Ojodu Bega, and you're going to the island, again, Ojodu Bega is quite busy. I don't know why it's, it's, uh, it's so heavy at this time, especially on the bridge. It's usually uh, quite light. So under the bridge might be a bit busy. but uh, So it's quite busy uh, right now if you're coming from the Lagos Ibado Expressway into Lagos. That's uh, pretty heavy right now. All from, uh, I just want to take a look at what uh, the major bus stops in that area are saying. Across, uh, across the bridge, the Kara Bridge, is quite busy all the way to Lagos. Uh, the major, uh, the pet mobile petrol station and all the other locations across, uh, coming into Lagos. So that's busy. And then after Oju de Bega is free, all the way to Ogudu area where it starts getting busy. Now let's go over to um, Ikeja. Now usually, uh, typically everybody wants to, uh, every, they said all roads lead to the island, right? So uh, we expect that uh, most of what you would see today is gonna be quite busy. Now if you're going from Ikeja to the island, it's gonna take you almost two hours. Same route, same route is also, um, Third Mainland Bridge is also the fastest route. So that is also quite busy. Now, I don't know what's happening uh, on Twitter, on social media, guys. Uh, if you could just give us one or two updates. I, uh, I only be, have I'll one as right now. Uh, something that came up about 20, well, about 15 minutes ago. It says, uh, well, since academic work has fully resumed for both primary and secondary schools, traffic is back. Abeokuta Express Road is going through Ikeja along or to Ikeja along. Oshodi is busy. It says hashtag brace up for <laughs> it uh, and the hashtag traffic chief giving this information here. Uh, that's what I have. Do you have any? Okay, so I have, I said 19 minutes ago, um, someone shared on, on Twitter, traffic on Third Milan Bridge, of course, we are moving just, we are just moving small, small. Mm -hmm. And someone says, sorry guys, that's how Lagos wants to be. Third Milan Bridge doesn't require such stress always, but our leaders can't think out of the box. <laughs> okay, well, there's traffic, slight traffic on Third Mainland Bridge. So if you're on Third Mainland Bridge, just as this person said, just go small, small. Mm. 
Then uh, there's someone saying um, that uh, you can now register for the e-tag for the Leki Ikoi toll on the mainland. Mm, Apparently, great. it's at uh, the around the Indubisi Kanu Park, Alausa Ikeja. This is uh, at Traffic Chief giving this information. So uh, mm. hopefully, you know, if you are trying to get that, it'll be easier for you on the mainland because the, the queues in Leki have not stopped. I, I still hear you know, nightmares coming from that queue uh, at uh, Lekki there. It's mm. all yours, Yomi. All right, thanks so much. Uh, now, yesterday, uh, this morning, we heard uh, the news of uh, what's happening at Abu Legba with the pipeline explosion. But that is not affecting traffic in Abu Legba area this morning. So uh, it's not on any major road. So the roads are free in Abu Legba, even though it seems like people are also avoiding uh, driving this morning. Uh, so from Abu Legba bus stop, things are a bit uh, are a bit free. So if you're going to say Ikeja or you're going to Yaba area, uh, well, it's going to be heavy once you come out of that area, and it's going to take you about an hour and 33 minutes uh, thereabout. So if you're heading all the way to Yaba, so the, the, of course it's the major bus stops along Ikoroduro that are pretty pretty busy. So whether you're on Maryland or Palm Grove area or Banikuru, all of that is pretty busy this morning. But apart from that, it's uh, the usual Monday traffic. So within an hour, 30 minutes, two hours, you'll get to where you're going, except Apapa, of course. So, but every, everywhere else is, uh, you know what to expect. So uh, if there are some certain areas, if they allow bikes, you might be able to move faster with your bike. But that's about all that we could take on uh, the traffic reports in Lagos for this Monday morning. I'm heading over to the kitchen now with the guys. How's it going? Any gists for us? Mm. Well, I mean, um, as much as I would like to have like a very nice, jolly conversation, we, we do have to talk about the, the um, explosion that happened yesterday at Abulegba. You know this thing that people say, not until it happens to the leaders, they would really not know how it feels. And I think, to be honest, it's becoming, like it's almost becoming normal f to lose, for people to just die in this country. Like, death now doesn't even have that deep effect anymore. I just saw a video on Twitter of how someone was burned. A burned person was being taken off the site. And the sad thing is he was taken on a bike, like an Okada. Not, there was no ambulance or nothing. I think we really, we really need to have, to try to have more human feelings in this country. I don't even know how to say the leaders. I don't even know. So um, if there are reports, although there are, there's no official reports here, so there are reports that it was due to some vandals who... Mm -hmm. So people were, even before the explosion went off, mm -hmm. fuel was already, the fuel was already, you know, smelling. Mm -hmm. And I, some people put up tweets that, oh, there's, there's a high uh, density of uh, fuel sm f smell in this area mm -hmm. and all of that. So probably it was being vandalized mm -hmm. at that particular point in time. And it doesn't just always end well. It doesn't yeah. end well, I mean, and usually, and I don't know why people keep doing it. I think people feel like, um, let me just get mine in the jerry can before it explodes. Like everybody knows it's going to explode, but you still go there with the jerry can or with the bucket. And because you, where, while that is going on, people take pictures. Like, okay, this is what's going on. Because once the vandals do whatever it is that they want to do, and mm -hmm. they've taken, maybe what they, they came with a truck. Some of them actually come with trucks. With so, jerry cans on it. And no, no, no. They come with a truck, like with a tanker, mm -hmm. right? You break the pipeline, siphon whatever you, it is you're going to siphon, but you know you can't fix a pipeline back. So obviously you just leave it for the community. So the community guys then come out with their jerry cans and whatever it is, and they start fetching. And then That's one thing when. leads to another. Mm -hmm. Somebody lights a match. Mm -hmm. So someone the, actually the, go there to like yeah. a match. No, so, 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 no, well, so spark. That's, yeah, it could be a car backfiring. It could be S yeah. something just you maybe a, a glint of sunlight. It could be something, yeah. anything could and just spark it night, up. Yeah, and it and it's night, it's really yeah. sad because the gutters become a path for the fuel yeah. to flow. Yeah. So it, imagine how f how the gutters run into canals and 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 the likes. It could affect communities really distant from yeah. the place where it started. Th that's very true. You and, know, and, and it could even spark off from a further community. You that, know, that, so. That's actually true because mm. once the once the petrol starts flowing, you, mm. you don't know where it's flowing to. Yeah. So you can imagine somebody just cooking in the next street. Yeah. And mm. in an open fire. Mm -hmm. And of course when the petrol flows through the gutters to where you're cooking, mm. then there's an explosion. So it's it's just I mm. mean 
It's very sad, very, mm. very sad. Oh. Um, you know, yeah, they be. say they say if you see something, say something. Yeah. You know, um, that's the only that's all we can really say on that matter. If you see something, say something. But then, then again, who do you say it to? Exactly. Mm. You know, that becomes the question. And there must be a reason why people are not speaking out when these things are happening. Yeah, because exactly. It, Especially yeah. when when maybe you suspect maybe there's a mm. pipeline that runs through your community or runs through your backyard, mm. and you suspect that it's being vandalized even before it happens. Mm. You know, I mean, I know there are, there are um, a number of communities, not all of them, a number of communities that have this patrol um, and local security outfits yeah. that actually look after the pipelines. Yeah. Not all of them. And also members of the N NSCDC as mm -hmm. well, also to do some monitoring uh, and patrols and all of that. But y you, can't, you can't really guard all the pipelines in the mm -hmm. country. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, like mm -hmm. you were saying, eyewitness is really, really yeah. important. Um, to check out all that, yeah. This is okay. about safety of lives and property. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Uh, so, um, quite a lot has been happening over the weekend. Although this weekend was a very, very chill weekend, um, uh, people are getting ready for the Australia Open. That's uh, on, on the sport level. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Australian Open is coming up and all of that. And uh, for me, it's about Serena. I want her to pick this title. <laughs> really? I really? I really do want but her. But Naomi is trending though. <laughs> yeah, Naomi I really, is trending. I really, I really do want her. Because you see, uh, look, uh, the resilience, and not because of she's not prepared. I mean, mm. not because, uh, this is not being sentimental. This is not being, even though at the point I might want to be, but hey, she, she, she is trying to prove a point to herself, mm. of course, and to younger generations. Look, man, <laughs> if, you are going to, if you are going to take over, then earn it. It. Mm. She's 38. She has, yeah. She's 38. She wow. has a kid now. Yeah. You know, she's thinking, look, I want to win a Grand Slam and tell my daughter and I tell Alexa yeah. that. Mm. Yeah. You understand? Like, now there's a drive. I just feel like she just means one or maybe two. Mm. She might just say, okay, let me call it a day. Mm. Like, there's someone to look up to and say, yeah, mommy did it. I did mm. it. I did it. I did it. Mm. So for me, and then she has just, she, she won her pre tournament, you know, warm up. Mm. Yeah. You know, which is her first title in three years. She has gone to about four, five finals. Mm. So she has gotten really close. Yeah. But then at just that last huddle, mm. something just happens and all of that. This dude, is this, is this, is this is young girls. Those, uh, <laughs> those They've been looking years. up, up to you her understand? for years. For and years you, you, and you get, I mean, they were babies her. when yeah. she won her first Grand Slam. Yeah. They were, they were, Literally, baby, Babies, like we were yep. just being born. Mm -hmm. So, because if you're if you're if you're 19 and Serena is 38, 38. you can imagine. So, and they're coming for her. <laughs> <laughs> they are. Com they've Those two her ladies, every move, uh, Coco yeah. and Coco and Naomi. Oh mm. my goodness. Yeah. Uh, imagine yeah. that. So maybe she will use a bit of experience. Yeah. She use a bit of experience to yeah. break them. But let's see what happens. I'm excited this, as well. I find it so interesting that their dad wasn't even a coach and coached them to that kind of success. Uh, yeah, I want to talk about Davido and Choma, but we don't have much time. Yeah. We'll do it. <laughs> we'll do it. Yeah. Let's right, we'll take, take a break. quick break. We'll be back after this. So our very first performer this morning is an Afrobeat musician with a Paramount African Entertainment Sound. Now he goes by the name Cyclo Dean. Now he's an Afrobeat artist that brings his own style of lyricism while paying homage to his Yoruba culture. He's also a songwriter, rapper, and a poet. Okay, so you didn't tell me that part. <laughs> you I missed out that part. Yeah, I'm amazed. You, I'm, I'm, I am amazed. <laughs> yeah. Mom, I do rap, yeah. Oh, you rap and you're also a poet. Yeah, I do poet. Oh, okay, so I do poem. You do poems as well. Yeah. So what are you performing for us this morning? Mm, I call it five questions. Five questions. Like yeah. that poem, is that rap? Is that just... Song? It's got everything in it's it. It's got everything. It's like the full <laughs> premium package. Yeah. You know what? That's the best way to start our Monday. All right. Okay, blow you us know. away. <laughs>
And we're back for the second hour of the show. One hour gone by already and about uh, an hour 45 minutes to go. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Yeah, and if you enjoyed the first hour of the show, you'll definitely uh, love what we have for you in store for the second hour. Of course, we've had quite a bit already. Top player is standing by in the kitchen. For us. It's not like she's making for anything today. for us. Uh, <laughs> eventually. Tell me why. My chef uh, is on the way, my co-chef, you know. I'm always the first chef and my assistant chef, Chef Ome, will soon be here. And I'll blow your mind, uh, Yomi. Don't try me. Okay, so looking forward <laughs> to We will see who's assisting who mm -hmm. eventually. Wow. Uh, wow. But uh, we know something tasty will be going on yeah. in the kitchen very, very soon. As always, we have a bumper edition lined up. My name is Titi Laya Owens. And I'm Yomi Ope. Join us online at tvcentertainment.tv and on Facebook at TVC Connect. Send in those comments as soon as you can across all our social media platforms and use our hashtag. Please use this hashtag. It's very important. Wake up Nigeria on TVC. All right, so let's go straight to what uh, we have in store for you for the rest of the show. Of course. Ah. As long as you have the app for iOS or Android, you will be able to see everything we have on the lineup. And joining us for the very first time on the show, mm. uh, of course, our chef will be here. And Very um, shortly, very shortly. We will be taking that stroll down memory lane as soon as we can. We'll be bringing you most of the important events that took place in history. And for a second musical performance on the show, we have multi-talented artists uh, known for his impressive dance move, Official Soft. Certified Neuro Linguistic Practitioner Buluatife David joins us for Motivation Talk. And we're going to be talking about moving from potential to performance using the Focus Code. I wonder what the Focus Code is. And uh, Yomi Bosile is going to join us on uh, Auto Segment to talk to us about uh, what to do while driving by yourself. That's a deep one, though. I always wonder about that. Then on Spoken Word today, we have poke, uh, rather poet and spoken word artist Sefas. Now, Sefas will be joining us to perform Gentleman Street Urchins. And the only time shawarma or pizza is not dangerous for our health is when we are not the one paying for it. Because <laughs> we're born without silver spoons from small weed on the shop with hand on a low key. And when there's no light... Oluwa Femi Okwe Oluwa is joining us for our SME segment uh, this morning and talk about his uh, menswear fashion brand and uh, what he's been up to, how he started and the journey so far. Yeah. So the queen um, has a... Uh, Finally, <laughs> you know, she has succeeded. <laughs> she has come down. The blood has you know, and uh, it's uh, for me. It's a victory for free will. She's put out a statement that okay, look, mm. this is this, this is this, this is this. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, this is how many comment commentators on this matter that I don't even know what's up. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so normally, yeah. I'll, I was listening to this British commenta uh, commentator, and she said that look, normally things uh, surrounding the royalty are enshrouded in secrecy. Yeah. So this is like the most that we've known in a very long time yeah. about their indoings. And there's still a lot that we still don't, don't even know, know yeah. about this. But well, the point is now, they, they've relinquished their titles. Um, they would have wow. to pay back about 2.5 million uh, pounds, which, which was used for the renovation of their home. And then from June, they will stop receiving public funds. From, wow. June. from June. So it's not even now. <laughs> <laughs> you understand? So they can use from now to June and stop off. <laughs> I, saw, I, I, saw analysis, wow. I saw an analysis uh, yesterday that wow. said that it's going to be very difficult um, maintaining their security yeah. very far away from home mm. yeah, in Canada, across the Atlantic. Mm. And so that it's, going, it's also going to be almost impossible not to have recourse to public funds when it comes to their security mm -hmm. because they have different levels of threats. Mm. 
true. Uh, on the highest level, level you know, you know, Harry served in Afghanistan. So yeah. on the highest level, you have terrorists yeah. and jihadis and all those guys. Yeah. Very true. Then on the second level, you have um, stalkers. Stalkers. Local, yeah. Stalkers and the crazy Stalkers ones. and all those crazy the people. Press. the press. On the third level, <laughs> oh, yeah, no, the yeah, the press was the fourth level. Four, yeah. Press won't really hurt you unless they're ch chasing you. Yeah. yeah. Then on the third level, you have um, what they call these guys, what? racists and all these oh. uh, far-right guys oh, that yeah. don't like Extremists. me. Extremists. That don't like the fact that, you know, so black girl and different white levels. So they said oh, it's going to be very difficult. You can't just put it like two bodyguards on them. No, nope. it's going to be. And then they yeah. have a child again. Child's going to have to go to, to Nigeria. school. Nigeria. We we'll protect them. Wow. <laughs> really? Come to Send them to Abu Lekba to go and stay. <laughs> okay, but with that, we have to go for the news update. It's all yours, Ibrahim. Thank you so much, Titi. We'll begin this hour with the report of a multiple fire outbreak at Fagba and Ekora Road, Lagos, that occurred on Sunday evening. The cause of the fire are yet to be determined, but the Lagos State Emergency Response Agency says it has activated a state emergency response plan. The teams are said to have been mobilized to both incident sites. An eyewitness says the explosion occurred about 10 minutes after residents called Lasema to report the smell of a petrol. The inferno spread fast to a residential estate named Igoke around the Ilepo area and residents have deserted the area. The extent of damage is yet to be ascertained. The Nigerian army says it has arrested a suspected gun runner in the state and retrieved 10 locally made rifles from him. 50-year-old Ahmed Mohammed was arrested by troops of one division deployed to Operation Well Punch. The suspected arms dealer was, in, was intercepted in his way, uh, on his way rather, to Pandogari in Niger State to deliver the weapons to one Yunus Madaki, a bandit on the wanted list of security agencies. Mr. Mohammed is also accused of supplying weapons to bandits and kidnappers, terrorizing people in Benangwari, local government area of Kaduna State. The Southwest security outfit codenamed Amoteko has received the backing of the PDP presidential candidate in the last general election, Atiku Abubaka. The former vice president noted that the policing administration has been stretched to its limits, thus the need for state community input to address the rapidly growing challenges of insecurity and crime. It says, quote, it's obvious that current levels of insecurity in the country are giving rise to major initiatives such as Amoteko, and the issue need, need not to be controversial in the first place. When local police structures are closest to the grassroots, emergency response will be more effective than the current unwieldy chain of command that renders local government chairmen ineffective when the people are under attacks, unquote. The federal government has approved the use of a new test kit to dete detect the uh, HIV infection to ensure that the spread of the HIV virus is drastically reduced. The test kit, which also monitors the patient's response to antiretroviral therapy, will be available for purchase and use in hospitals across the country. Health Minister Dr. Sage Henry says a person who tests negative is counseled on how to stay negative, while the person that test positive is immediately linked to antiretroviral therapy services. Meanwhile, coordinator of the National AIDS, STI and Hepatitis Control Program, Mr. Raoui Shagilola, says the CD4 rapid test kit will be very useful in advanced HIV care. And President Buhari has met the Prince of Wales, Prince Charles, in Scotland. The visit comes ahead of the inaugural UK-Africa summit, built to start today. The summit, which is hosted by the British Prime Minister Boris Johnson, is expected to bring together African leaders, international business chief executives and heads of international organizations. President Buhari and his delegation will also have bilateral meetings with Prime Minister Johnson, as well as heads of multilateral organizations. The Duke of Sussex believes he is taking a leap of faith in stepping back from being a senior royal, saying there really was no other option. Speaking at an event on Sunday evening, Prince Harry said he and Meghan had hoped to continue serving the Queen, but without public funding. It was his first speech since the couple said they wanted to stand down from being full-time working royals. But the Prince said he wanted to make it clear he and Meghan were not walking away. Earlier this month, Prince Harry and Meghan said they intended to step back as senior members of the royal family and work to become financially independent. That's a news update for this hour. Stay tuned. Welcome to the kitchen, people. Yeah. We have the beautiful chef Ome in the kitchen this morning.
See, she came with like all sorts of glam. That means that the food we're having this morning, it's like a glammed up. Of course. So what do you expect? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you for having and me. And she is making something delicious. I like yeah. the sound. I like this um, smell from this um, meat, this beef here, but it is a suya special jollof. Yeah. Chef Ome style. Of course. <laughs> yeah, she said it's the Chef Ome style. So if you make your suya jollof, trust me, today there's an extra touch with the Turare girl spices. And she did give me some spices the other, um, the other time. Mm -hmm. And to, to be honest, yeah, I did use them like a few days ago. And it was really, really nice. Thank you so much. Thank I appreciate you. it. Okay, so let's dig in for this morning. Okay. What are ingredients for our suya, suya jollof? jollof rice. Yes. So basically I'm using fresh paprika. Okay. Fresh habanero and tomatoes. Okay. But of course I steamed it okay, and I was say blended that. that of okay. Course, yeah. With a bit of anise seed. The spice. Anise seed. Seed is a spice. Oh. I said it's special. So this anise seed. Yeah, that, that's, those that are part of the, the special, special things. things. Okay, yeah. Okay. So you know so. we're going to run the menu on the screen so okay. that people at home can start writing it down so that you, so you have your special chef or may you show that you two <laughs> can do it. Quickly, we have rice, celery, carrots, tomatoes, beef suya, bell peppers, fresh paprika, yaji, specially made by Tirare girl herself, garlic, ginger, onion, sea salt, cabbage, vegetable oil, fresh habanero, sesame, or also known as Turare special curry mix. Yeah. Yes, that's the ingredients we're using this morning. So now, this will cost us approximately how much? Five, six thousand naira. I, I try to keep my budget. This is five, six thousand is yeah. budget. Wow, okay, yeah. okay. So think about three, four people. Okay, three, four people. Okay, okay, that's good, that's good. Yeah. And now she's doing something interesting this morning. So she's, uh, I asked her if we're going to parboil the rice and she said no. She's just going to put it straight yeah. in. So why are you doing it that way? Okay, the, there are so many tricks to jollof rice that okay. so many people do not know. First off, to get a very good jollof rice, mm -hmm. your ingredients matter a lot. Okay. I, I see a lot of people putting too many tomatoes yeah. in jollof rice. I think it's not, I'm not saying it's not good, yeah. but it doesn't work for me. For you. Yeah, okay. that okay. way. So I think um, to get that original jollof taste, you need yeah. to use a lot of tatashi. That's okay. the fresh paprika. The paprika yeah. yeah, of course. And then um, another thing is that water is not what cooks rice. It's steam that cooks rice. Okay, that gives us our Nigerian jollof. Yeah. Okay. Steam, okay. a lot of steam. So, you know, um, when you, of course, the pepper has been pre cooked. Yeah. Then the rice, just wash it and put a little water and let it cook on low heat. heat. So oh, it's okay. the steam that's going to cook, cook the, the rice. rice. That's okay. the reason why I'm not purple. So, what are we rice. doing in our local pot? Guys, have you bought your local pot? <laughs> I don't mean I'm talking, I'm not bought it yet. I know. But right? this just has a way of reminding you of, you know, your childhood days and the way mm -hmm. your grandma's, like my grandma, cooks with pots like this. Yeah, so I have here my vegetable oil okay. and my onions. I'm allowing the, my onions to release its flavor into the oil. The oil okay. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. So I'll be adding next my curry mix. Okay. Of course, curry mix. Curry yeah. mix. Yeah. I have the curry mix. I know, right? Proudly, <laughs> I do. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to add a bit of that. Okay. Then um, my yaji. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So apart from the <clears throat> beef, the um, suya, the suya beef. Mm -hmm. It's also essential that you have the the, the, the yaji. Yeah, the suya okay, spice. So it more or less gives like the extra flavor. flavor. Okay. Yeah, so those okay. are the two basic um, spice that I'll be using: yeah. the curry and the yaji. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh. So you know what? So what, what, are we putting it right now, or we're we gonna wait for a bit? Mm, we can put it right now. Right now. Okay. Okay. So you know, while we're putting the curry mix and yeah. while we're getting this all sorted, we're gonna go on a quick break. But you do not want to go anywhere. There's so much more. Wake up, Nigeria. <laughs> Welcome to the kitchen, people. Welcome back. So Chef Ome has gone a bit far, but you haven't missed much if you're just joining, it, joining us. We are making our Suya Jollof special. What makes it special is the Chef Ome touch. Now, we've, um, let's quickly run them through what happened while they were not here. Okay. So we fried um, our onions. Something you said. You said you allowed your, uh, the onions to... What was that word you used? What's the, what was the word? To you? release. To release. Ah, we will learn this um, <laughs> kitchen, kitchen slang. Yeah. She allowed the onions to release its flavor, and then she put the combination of the tomato, the... Um, fresh paprika. Fresh paprika. So fresh there, was no, there was no fresh peppers. 
No. Oh, so I don't want it to because you know the yaji has a bit of hotness. So yeah. I don't want it to be too, too hot, hot just oh, so that okay. everybody can, you know, enjoy the enjoy. meal. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's just um, fresh tomatoes and fresh, fresh paprika, paprika and fresh habanero. Oh. Please, what's the habanero? That's shombo or bawa. Say that. Please. Then don't um, our celery. Celery. So why did you put celery? Um, it's my signature aromatic. Oh, yeah. Okay, it has okay. this extra flavor. So is it the fresh or did you dry it? Fresh. Fresh. Yes, oh, so you fresh. blended it? Yeah. With I steamed it first. Oh, okay. <coughs> Excuse me. So what I have here, basically, yes. fresh tomatoes, shombo. Shombo. Um, tatashi. Tata okay. Yeah, tatashi. That's paprika. Then my carrot. All inside this? Yeah. Okay. Carrot. Then I have mm. celery, onions, mm. ginger, garlic, oh, wow. and anise seed. You know what? Let's quickly <laughs> write that down because this is like this is the real signature. We finally got a chef to tell us a secret. <laughs> so you definitely want to try this. I think I'm even I'm so interested in the fact that you put celery yeah. inside. So you, mm -hmm. you want to steam the celery. So mm -hmm. after steaming it, you now blend it. So with you steam it. it. I put a bit of oil in the pot oh, and okay. reduce the fire to the minimum to the um, lowest. Yeah, yeah, to the barest minimum. So either, um, the peppers, the tomatoes, especially releases its own juice, oh, okay. and that's what cooks the whole peppers together, together. Oh. so allow it burn a bit you okay. allow it steam till it burns the water dries off yeah completely. then you burning is important because it has that flavor okay. that bottom that part is Flavor. Kind of, it's part of it. Because I still yeah. understand why you have to burn your food. <laughs> no, not burn, it. burn, but then just allow it to try a bit in the oh, okay. pot. Okay. Then you blend, of course. Oh, have okay. This. Oh, yeah. So you mean, even when you're talking about the tomatoes, it was it's whole tomatoes? Yeah, whole tomatoes, this kind of tomatoes. We have learned. So yeah. you're, you want to boil your tomatoes whole with the shombo and the um, paprika mm -hmm. and the celery with a little oil before yeah. you blend it all together. To, no wonder it looks a bit different. We want to see that to yeah. get this. And then you put the rice in. Yeah. So now, are you going to have to put a lot of water? Just a little water. With very low heat. Yeah. So it cooks up. Like, you put more water, you check. If it's okay. still tough, you add a little more water okay. all the way. But I, I don't want to just pour in all of water. the water. So oh, just okay. little water, but more of steam okay. that is going to cook the food. So now, you know some people so like boiled to water. put um, butter while they're making Yeah, their... preference, basically. But, okay. I, you know, I'm you know, all natural. natural. Okay. Yeah, so... But it's fine, of course. Okay. Want to... Then we use rosemary. Yes, like we said, did use rosemary. Instead of thyme. Instead of thyme, and then we put bay leaf, bay leaf yeah. inside as well. So you might want to substitute your thyme for rosemary for seasoning and for... Um, general for cooking sometimes. General cooking. If yeah, you don't want that cliche, a bit different. stronger than yeah. the thyme. So when do we put oh. our cabbage on the rest? So now, you know when you buy suya? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> you know when you buy suya in mm -hmm. the, um, from the aboki guy? <laughs> so he has this um, cabbage and tomatoes yes, 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 and so onions. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's the feel I'm bringing into the jollof rice. So this okay. goes right to when the meal is cooked. So I just toss it in and then stir all together. So oh, you have the okay. whole... With the suyas too. Oh, with the suyas. Yeah. So we're putting, even, we're putting this, including the suya at and, the end? Yeah, at the end. Oh, okay. Like when the um, meal is about three minutes away, yes. so you can just toss in all of that. Oh, okay. So we're gonna um, chop all this. You're gonna use this to just peel to the peel skin. the back. Yeah, oh, okay. but I'm gonna chop with knife. The knife. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know what, people? A lot is going on here. But while we start our chopping, we're going to go on a quick break, and you don't want to go anywhere. This <laughs> is Wake Up Nigeria. Thank you for staying with us. So we have certified neuro-linguistic practitioner Bulwa Tife David, who is the founder of the Focus Life Community and convener of the Focus Life Summit and creator of the Focus Code. He's here to talk about moving from potential to performance using the Focus Code. It's great to have you, David. You are welcome. Thank you so, so much. So now that's a word that people use a lot, potential. Potential, potential, something that you can see in there, something that you feel would come to fruition, but then not everybody um, gets to fulfill that potential. And that's what we're talking about today, potential to perform. Right? Exactly. All right. Exactly. Well, first of all, how can you recognize potential? Oh, well, I think the truth of the matter is that everybody in this world has got one potential or the other. Or the other, okay. Yeah. The way we have been designed by God is such that he has packed everybody with uh, potential to do so much more than we can ever be doing. Think about it um, like somebody who's got an iPhone 11, mm. but only uses that phone to make phone calls mm. and receive SMS and maybe chat on WhatsApp. Which many people do. Exactly, whereas that phone has already been designed to do a whole 
a lot more. more than what it's being used for. So uh, one of the things I say to people is that potential is energy at rest. Performance is energy at work. Mm. So everybody's got that energy with yes, them. Yes, that's what we should put out there first. Everyone has Everyone potential. Everyone has the potential. On whatever, it's, it, it, it's all in different facets. Exactly. We all have potential. Exactly. That's, we all that's have okay. potential. So the question is, why is it that most of the time people cannot convert their potential to, to performance. performance. Um, last week we spoke about the three major things that can hold people down from doing that. And what we talked about is the fact that there are some people because they lack clarity, for some people because they have been held hostage by limiting beliefs, fear, and a lot of other things. And then the third thing I talked about last week was the fact that there are some people that are just victims of theft. You know, they are being robbed of the most precious gift or the most precious resource in this world which is their time. Their time. You know, so when all of these things happen, people cannot move their potential to performance. But the question really is, um, there are some people, they are clear of what they want to do, mm. they know how to do it, yet they are not still converting their potential to performance. Okay. And that is what we are focusing on. All right, so how do, we, how do we move from that? From that point, you know what to do now, yeah. like you said, but then you are finding it hard to convert from potential to, to performance. performance. How, do you, how do you go about it? So for me, um, there's something, I, I, a concept I came, came up with a while ago, and I call it setting your performance triggers. Mm. Now, we all have what I call performance triggers. We all have those things that when they come to mind, they jot us out of our sleeping position. Mm. They set us on the move, you know. Uh, think about it like somebody that uh, is being chased by a dog. Mm. Uh, that person will probably run faster than Usain both. And if on a good day you ask that person to run, the person will probably say, ah, no, 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 I can't, I can't run. run. You know, I'm reminded of a story of a particular woman that um, to robbers came to her house and then she scaled the fence of her own compound to into another one. compound. Now, after the robbery has gone, um, she now went to the gate of that big compound and discovered that, oh, the gate was already actually locked from outside. So she started knocking on the gate and people heard and they came to the gate and said, ah, how did you get inside? And she said, oh, I jumped the fence. Now people now ask that, okay, jump back outside now. And she was like, I, I can't do it. Hmm. Now, what happened was that in the, in the nick of the moment when the robbers came, Jimmy. she realized that, oh, there was potential to jump over the fence. Hmm. And because there was a performance trigger, which was the, the, the desire to protect her life, she jumped. But mm. now that the robbers are gone, the trigger is gone. It's no longer there. So for me, the more we are able to bring our performance triggers to mind consciously, the easier performance becomes for us. But would it be possible now, those performance triggers, like we said, a rush of adrenaline or something, yeah. how um, feasible is it? How can you really put yourself in that situation? Because like you said, you said a dog chasing you. Yeah. I, I might yeah. not want to, run, want to run, but how do you physically put yourself in that frame of mind that you know that will trigger that performance. Okay, so uh, before we even talk about how to trigger it, I'll talk about the two major types of performance triggers that okay. people have. The first one is away from, and the second one is towards. So away from is something I'm trying to get away from. Okay. Towards is something I'm trying to run towards. Now most of the time, because and towards sometimes comes by way of the goals that people have set by the dreams they have. But most of the time, when people look at where they are today versus where they want to be. The distance seems to be so large that they just give up. So that's why I said to people that you need to first of all move yourself out by away from, it gets you halfway, and then you now say uh, what I'm actually trying to reach is no longer too far, and then you can complete it. Now, all of these things that we're talking about, they are now a function of mindset creation or a, 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 an imagination kind of thing. So <clears throat> take for instance, one of my own motivation, I mean, one of my own away from performance trigger mm. is that there is a possibility that one day I will not be able to pay house rent mm. and the landlord will chase me out of the house. Mm. Has it happened to me before? No. Is there a possibility that it can happen to me? Yes. yes. If I don't do the work I'm expected to do. So yeah. when I think about my family and how I want to protect them, now, and how I want to protect them from the danger. Now, that danger in itself, I've painted a picture so vividly of the things that can happen to them that it becomes a, an away from performance trigger. Such that if I get to work and I don't feel like working, and I remember that if I don't do this work, I don't get this money, 
I can't do this thing for my family. This can happen to them. I move myself to start doing it. Hmm. So everybody needs to come to that point of saying that what is that thing that can happen to me? The that, worst that can the happen. The worst that can happen to me. Now, I say this way that the gorier the picture is, the more driven you become. The more motivated you are to move. Exactly. Okay. So you need to be able to go to the, to, to, the, to the farthest distance of the possible thing that can happen to you. Now, when that picture is clear in your mind, you know, I, I remember I saw a particular Nike advert, and then in that moment, um, Rooney was actually playing the ball. And then I think he, start, he was trying to score, and then Caval got the ball from him. Now, in that moment, the thought that came to Rooney's head was thinking about him no longer being um, a great footballer. Now, he was thinking about himself losing out on an opportunity to be knighted by the queen. He thought about the fact that after a while, he now became the guy that was marking the field and he was living in a mobile trailer now full of beards and all of that. In that moment, he stepped out from the trailer and he looked up and it was Caval that got the ball from him that was on the, on the billboard. Now, that picture in his mind propelled him to run so much that he got the ball back. Mm. Now, the towards for him was that the moment he got the ball back and he scored the ball, they now showed his thought as to when, you know, all the child that was given back to the, in England were named Wayne Rooney, Wayne Rooney, Wayne Rooney, Wayne Rooney. So the moment now, what I say to people is that this performance trigger is not something you start thinking about when you need to perform. It's something that you must have thought about. You must have defined for yourself before the time of performance comes. So that when it's time to perform and you are not performing, you just remind yourself. You know, I say to people that we wonder why some people keep their family portrait on their work table. People think they're just trying to decorate their workspace. For some people, that's that is their trigger. performance trigger. So now you mentioned something about um, the rent. Yes. That is more like a way from. That is an away from. That is a way exactly. from. Exactly. So now when you think of, I'm uh, looking at a situation as um, going to. Exactly. So maybe you can think of what life, what kind of Do life Do you understand? Family, what kind of life would my family live if I you know, can make, if I all, can these make all of available. these So that's another that form of performance That is now trigger. the towards. Towards. Can we, can we, can we um, highlight a little on that? On the so for the towards performance trigger, right, it is the picture of an exciting life. The picture of you being able to probably fly uh, a private jet, you know, the picture of you probably being able to be a blessing to a thousand of people. You know, take for instance, I had a conference over the course of the weekend. Uh, at different times, I felt like not doing it again. Mm. But for me, the picture that was only in my head was the all full of over a thousand people. Now, you know, from, 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 from what I've seen from a lot of people, the, the, the away from, yes. at times, is a more uh, compelling motivating, compelling factor, factor than, than the towards. towards. Because look, everybody has that towards. I would love to be in a private jet. I would love to go to space and all that. Exactly. Oh, wonderful. Thank you so much for this. Uh, performance triggers. I hope you've been able to learn something there. And uh, that's uh, quite an insightful Thank discussion. You so you. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you very much. All right. Okay. That's it. I hope you're able to pick up something, how to move from uh, potential to performance and using performance triggers to get you to where you want to be. Now, talking about a trigger, um, the kitchen is a trigger of some sort. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> talk about you are holding down the gun and all of that, yaji and uh, jollof or what sauce and all of that. I'm triggered now. So I am on my way to, this is toward. I'm triggered towards the kitchen now. Yeah, triggered towards the kitchen, right? But I'm just going to quickly remind you that early this, earlier this morning, you said that you are going to stay away from me in the kitchen because you don't want people thinking you like food. So, you see I that did, trigger? I, did, I, trigger I didn't know that you can make up visuals in your head. I never said that. <laughs> fine, I won't judge you. You can trigger yourself here. It's fine. It's a good trigger. So, um, I and Chef Ome have been up to not be doing me so much. Why are you looking at me now? It's not me <laughs> and you that have been up to. It's yeah, my yeah. hands are washed. Yeah, I, yeah. I did so much while they were not here. I chopped a lot of choppy bowls. Yes, you did. Act like you did. You did. Well yeah, done. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I chopped a lot of choppy balls. <laughs> and we could just quickly look at the pot. We do have our rice steaming here. Did you add any more water apart from? A little more. A little just more. A little okay, more. so it's still steaming. Mm -hmm. And now we're chopping the carrots and the rest. Yeah. And after that, oh yes, you did something interesting. You know, we Nigerians like to use our knife to scrape our carrots. So she said we shouldn't use knife again. We should use this one. Life is easier. I mean... But I don't think it's about life being hard. <laughs> it's just what <laughs> it's just what I used with to. this. I actually I mean. Okay, so now 
this we're, we're going to pretty much have this in complete natural form. It's not even going to get softer or anything. No, no, so I mean, for we fit farmers, mm -hmm. this is still going to be crunchy. crunchy mm -hmm. Have all the nutrients, and you're still 100. percent So we're putting the soya at the tail end as well. Yeah, almost, almost, almost time for that. Almost time Very for that. Soon. Okay. So, I mean, you can have a lot more soya mm -hmm. if that's what you want. You could have less soya. But I think the whole essence of the soya and the jollof is to have the chunky meat in it. Mm -hmm. So, when do we get to put the soya spice? Oh, I did initially. Oh, you did initially? With the curry. Oh, okay. But okay. I'm still going to add, still gonna add a just so it more towards the end. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, okay. So, did you make this yourself? Yeah. Oh, wow. Chef or me, you're not taking it easy with us. So. <laughs> okay. So I'm just going to cut the bell peppers. Okay. All of these two are uh, going in. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, interesting. So we're going to cut the bell peppers. Oh, I think, it, okay, yes, and the green pep mm -hmm. bell peppers. And the well. cabbage too. Okay. In. You know what? The second hour is about to be over and we have so much more. You don't want to go anywhere. We're going on a quick break and we will be right back. Watching us right now, just know we've got to the last lap of the show, the final lap of the most exciting family show on TV. 45 minutes to go, and mm. every second is filled with quite a bit of excitement. Yeah, after all the said and done, we're still the number one show. Yeah. And of course, that's because it's, it's so tightly packed, a variety <laughs> of top-notch entertainment and great food. Yes, of course. There's the stuff that's going on in the kitchen, man. You, You're uh, wondering. Uh, if they're, you know, as you look, look at that, goodness me. Did you know that one of those, um, oh well, pots look at could, the steam. could work on an electric stove? Did look at the know? steam coming out from that thing. Yeah. And yeah. then the suya going ah, into suya the, does enter. the traditional jollof rice. Ah, and go. those spices and I don't know what that thing is. Okay, that's yaji. <laughs> Yeah, making you hungry yet? Uh, you should be, you should oh be. Let's go, let's go. I think we should just all live in the kitchen. Yeah, let's just, just well, you know what, let's get through the content <laughs> and yeah. then we can go have a taste later on. Yeah, so show. don't forget we're streaming live and you can find us on our app as well, all of that. You know, let's just get past that quickly. <laughs> yeah. My name is Titi Lara Oinsong. Yummy Okwe. Let's uh, tell you what's going to be happening for the rest of the show. Mm. Uh, don't forget that. It's going to be great. Uh, Yomi Bosude is going to be joining us. He's a uh, seasoned motor mechanic and he's going to be talking to us about those long drives when you're alone and uh, you don't know what to do with yourself. Uh, you're not <laughs> supposed to be watching TV, so yeah. Yeah, we'll true. We'll give you a few tips. True. <laughs> and then poet and spoken word artist Sefas. They'll be joining us to perform Gentleman Street Urchins. Yeah, we go tell blow you brush, you know, we talk too much. This is why we have breakfast for morning at the my clean, we will take brush teeth. And the only time shawarma or pizza is not the Joining us for uh, SME is Olua Femi Opa Olua, and uh, he owns a menswear fashion brand. And he's going to be, uh, and also manufacturing as well, and he's going to be talking to us about this business and uh, how he's making it in the Nigerian market. Yeah, it's not easy putting a business like that together, menswear, but it's a it's a huge market though. Yeah, yeah. it's a, it's a huge it's a huge market and it's expanding as well. So and it's an expensive market. Yeah, uh, more you want to buy something for a guy mm. versus what you want to buy for yourself as a girl. Do you realize that the amount of money you spend for one shirt? We'll buy you four dresses. <laughs> well, yeah, well, it depends yeah. on the type of dresses. <laughs> because well. there's some dresses 
you know. You know. Uh, but uh, we have to take the news. Yeah, update. so at, at what point are we going to talk about Peruzzi and Choma? Because I, I really want to know. You really to want the to talk about you know, quickly, yeah, we, we would have we, we would introduce our um, Instagram takeover yes. live where we're going to talk about that uh, our Instagram takeover today oh, at today? 10 a.m. Okay. Yes. So you want to know what we're going to talk about? Yes. Um, come on our Instagram page, TVC Connect on Instagram. We will be talking about it 10 a.m. sharp. That's Tokwe stuff. Yeah. yeah, that's my stuff. Young people <laughs> stuff. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, Brian is on standby with the news. Uh, welcome to the news again. We'll begin this hour with the report of a multiple fire outbreak at Fagba and Ekora Road, Lagos, that occurred on Sunday evening. The cause of the fires, uh, the fire, are yet to be determined, but the Lagos State Emergency Response Agency says it has an activated state emergency response plan. The teams are said to have been mobilized to both incident sites. An eyewitness says the explosion occurred at about 10 minutes after residents called Lasema to report the smell of petrol. The inferno spread fast to, an, to a residential estate around the Ilepo area and residents have des deserted the area. The extent of damage is yet to be ascertained. The Nigerian army says it has arrested a suspected gun runner in the state and retrieved 10 locally made rifles from him. 50-year-old Ahmed Mohammed was arrested by troops of one division deployed to Operation World Punch. The suspected arms dealer was intercepted on his way to Pandogari in Niger State to deliver the weapons to one Unisa Madaki bandit on the wanted list of security agencies. Mr. Mohammed is also accused of supplying weapons to bandits and kidnappers, terrorizing people in Benanguari, local government area of Kaduna State. The Southwest Security Outfit, codenamed Amoteku, has received backing up the PDP presidential candidate in the last general election at Kobabaka. The former vice president noted that the policing administration has been stretched to its limits. Thus, the need for state community input to address the rapidly growing challenges of insecurity and crime. He says, quote, it is obvious that current levels of insecurity in the country are giving rise to major initiatives such as Amoteko, and the issue need not be controversial in the first place. When local police structures are closest to the grassroots, emergency response will be more effective than the current unwieldy chain of command that renders local government chairman ineffective when the people are under attacks, unquote. The federal government has approved the use of a new test kit to detect and monitor HIV infection to ensure that the spread of the HIV virus is drastically reduced. The test kit, which also monitors a patient's response to antiretroviral therapy, will be available for purchase and use in hospitals across the country. Health Minister Dr. Osage Hanere says a person who tests negative is counseled on how to stay negative while a person that tests positive is immediately linked to antiretroviral therapy services. Meanwhile, coordinator of the National AIDS and STI and Hepatitis Control Program, Mr. Araoyi uh, Segulola, says the CD4 rapid test kit will be very useful in advanced HIV care. Now, President Buhari has met the Prince of Wales, Prince Charles, in Scotland. The visit comes ahead of the inaugural UK-Africa summit, built to start today. The summit, which is hosted by the British Prime Minister Boris Johnson, is expected to bring together African leaders, international business chief executives and heads of international organisations. President Buhari and his delegation will also have bilateral meetings with Prime Minister Johnson, as well as heads of multilateral organisations. And as another news... On Wake Up Nigeria today, bye-bye. Well, it's Monday on the show, and usually we like to do this, uh, talk to uh, uh, all our viewers about their car, what you need to do while you're on the road. Now, I'm here with uh, the main man from hey. Autocentric Garage. <laughs> yes, boss. Uh, Yomi Bosu today. Mm -hmm. And today we'll be talking about something quite interesting. Um, what to do on the road uh, when you're driving alone and it's a long drive. Sometimes you drive for an hour, sometimes you drive for two hours. Sometimes, you know, if you're somebody like him, you can drive up to six hours on the road, going to a lorry, going to the east, wherever it is. What are the things that you do while you're uh, on the road? And so we're going to be starting. Yes. Uh, basically, so uh, you start your journey. Sometimes, you know, any, any, well, of course, with, as with any journey, when, once you start, you're excited, you're pumped mm -hmm. uh, for the first 30 minutes, yes. 45 minutes. But then, An hour. 
even now, nah, you know, but, but after a while, things start getting boring. You start thinking, hmm, uh, what else can I do? You okay. know, and that's where maybe fatigue sets in. Absolutely. And you start sleeping on the wheel, and you know, you endanger yourself and other others, uh, other road, road users. users as well. So, what are the things that I should do, or what, that I should think about, or how can I engage myself otherwise if I'm driving? Okay, great. First, you before you even set off the journey, mm. you need to check that you have your tools in place your spare tire number one that you have enough air in it that's properly inflated yep. you need to ensure that you have your jack and wheel spanner it's not enough to see the jack try and use it because sometimes the jack may be bad hmm. and you you've forgotten or you're not even aware yeah. that it's bad you know so, so double check your jack double check your jack double check your wheel spare spanner, tire, spare tire. tire. Uh, wheel spanner as well. yes hmm. you know so once that's done that's number one number two ensure you have fluid in the car water especially because you might get dehydrated along the way hmm. And you might be in a space, you know, maybe you're traveling eight hours, a long distance, you might need water. So you just want to have water mm. in the car that you can sip on. So load up on water. Yes. Uh, if, if I'm doing a long trip, I usually like taking things like plantain chips. Yes. Uh, nuts and things like that. Stuff that I can toss in my mouth to just stay Keep away. you busy, yeah, you know, and busy. yes. And not losing so much focus on um, from the wheels. Mm. That's another point. Another point also is you want to ensure that you communicate with the people you're going to see or where you're going. Mm. You know, so you can almost gauge your time that, okay, I should be there in five hours, six hours. So th there's someone expecting you and they can on also the check side. up on you. Yes, yeah, exactly. From exactly. time to time to keep you. And if you need to talk for like a space of maybe two hours or an hour, I mean, or maybe 30 minutes, mm. just to keep you awake, make a call. Mm. Because th that saves lives. People don't know. You can engage someone 30 minutes. Just ensure you use your hands free. Do not put your phones to your ears, no? So you have your hands so free. So have that continuous engagement. Engagement like. to mm. keep you alert throughout that journey. Well, there's something you said about music, which I yes. thought was was interesting. So uh, listen to music that you like. Yes. Upbeat music that just keeps you going. Keeps that, you that's going. Also, yeah. Make your playlist. Make your very nice selection of music that you like. For me, I like reggae. So that keeps me going. Then you also can make another playlist of the music you really don't like much. So that keeps you changing the tracks. Mm. That keeps you alert, you know. Also, if you have a multifunction steering like this one yeah. that you can control the music, volume, radio, all of that from, excellent. For if not, you might need to be tapping from there, from tapping the deck from time to time. Mm. So that keeps you alert because remember, you're alone. Yeah. There's one thing I wanted to ask though. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, when, when it comes to, you know, now we have all this multifunction, uh, dashboards, yeah, dash and, and we fancy every, everything looking like an airplane cabin. Mm -hmm. uh, but I've also noticed a few times, there are a few cars now that have a screen here. Yes. And that means that people can actually watch movies. But that's not good for a driver, is it? No, it's not. So because I've seen that happen. Yes. Uh, and so why do we then have screens here that people can watch? It's the, Your screen is not just for watching movies. Some of those screens help with map navigation. Mm. So it makes it so it's like using your phone map. But in this case, it's now on a bigger screen, yeah. a touch screen. So it's easy for you to look at the screen and get navigation to where you're going. Yeah, but I, but I, was, I was asking, why, why isn't that converted to like a DVD player for that some is vehicles, distracting for yes. the driver? Yeah. For some vehicles, once you engage the driver and you start to move, the DVD function goes off, it's disabled. Right. For right. some vehicles, it doesn't go disabled. You can actually drive. But then it's left to you to understand that it's you're not, not for you you're not supposed to watch exactly. and focus because it's for other occupants in the vehicle hmm. you know so at that point you should let wisdom kick in and face the steering and face your your what's in front of you your road trip and hmm. have that in mind don't get distracted with that if your vehicle so finally as, as we're running off what do you do when all else fails mm. and you still feel sleepy so you've tried you've you've uh, tossed a few mm. granuts in your mouth it didn't mm. work You've played loud music, it didn't work. Um, uh, you, 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 you've tried the phone call, you know, and mm -hmm. now it's over, it didn't work. When, it but still you're so didn't sleepy. work. And you've also tried bitter cola, it still didn't work. <laughs> <Bitter cola. laughs> yes, now, yeah, th yeah. that stuff is really bitter, it yeah. will keep you alert. Bitter cola, cola nut, you know, those fruits keep you alert. But if all of that doesn't work, look for the nearest hotel to rest and sleep. Because hmm. at the end of the day, it's fatigue and accidents crashes happen in seconds hmm. it's just closing your eye for a second and trouble has occurred hmm. so you want to go somewhere to sleep call wherever wherever you're going that say i can't make it i need to yeah. rest you know at the end really, of the day really your safety important. comes first really important safety first 
uh, if you've tried a few things and you notice that you know your your you know your body's still not able exactly, to handle it, you can't handle it. You're on the highway. You have to find a place to rest. Just have your rest. 15, 30 minutes. You'll be surprised at how. Even if it's an hour, you can get somewhere. A have whole a hour. One hour. Yes, <laughs> a whole hour out of your journey <laughs> in, in in Nigeria. You know. Anyway, uh, so do what's best for you, but make sure that you have enough rest and uh, yeah, you get get. Uh, uh, get that rest and make sure that you have a safe journey or whatever you're doing. But thank you so much for, mm. for, for giving us some of those tips. Uh, we'll be taking some of that with me as well. We're heading over back to the kitchen where uh, that amazing jollof rice. Uh, yeah, yeah. GNC, yeah. Oh, yeah. But before that, before that, before that jollof rice, uh, we have a spoken word performance from Cephas. So Yomi seems to have his mind on this jollof rice and uh, we have to see what we, what's going on in that kitchen in a bit. But before then, we have Sefas, a creative writer, a humorist and performance poet par excellence. Known for his crafty use of words, Sefas preaches societal truths, infusing creative expressions and humor. It's great to meet you, Sefas. Thank you very much. It's an honor meeting you as well. All right. I love the fact that uh, in your profile it says you're a humorist. Where are we going with that? Uh, so I'm actually a stand-up comedian. You, you do yeah, stand-up comedy? Yeah, I do stand-up comedy as well. Okay. I make and spoken word. How did spoken word, as well. how did spoken word come into it? Okay, so uh, I delved into the spoken word industry out of my desire to get my message out there okay. to to actually impact because there's this level to which you can be serious about stand-up comedy without people thinking you're preaching or something, you know. Okay, okay. And so with my spoken word poetry, I'm able to get my message out there while still keeping the mood lively, you know, and, and entertaining. Yeah, All right. Like so that, speaking yes. of entertaining, what are you going to be entertaining us with today? Okay, so I call this one Gentleman Street Orchins. Okay. Uh, it was born out of a... a a desire to, should I say, keep myself motivated because, you know, art in itself first speaks to the artist before the audience. All so, right. All right. you know, it was me trying to encourage myself while All right. encouraging my audience as well. Yeah. Gentlemen, street urchins, a nice play on words there. I'm going to be stepping off and letting you take the floor. Thank you very much. Okay. This days way that they call us comedians. See our lives one black joke. Of some good dress finish, bone mirror, moon not begin to think they provoke. This is all go package, go show, sit down quiet, like say we posh. Boy girl, who go tell blow you brush, you not fit talk too much. This is all they work out, but I open mouth, they claim say we they try keep fit. So they wash our blood sugar level, now I will buy rice, no meat. This is why we have breakfast for morning at the Michael we will take brush teeth. And the only time we're not allergic to dining expensive is when we're not the one paying for it. Because <laughs> we're born without silver spoons from small, without a chop with hand on a low key. And when there's no light at the end of the dark tunnel, we also with touch light like a bokeh. We also anything, poetry, comedy, music, even though our voice now no key. So if you see my diner, tell us you son and I also pass that the show key. We're the gentleman street orchins. No time, no Rolex watches. We make plans, when plans, no work. We slap the plan, give the plan crutches. Because plans must work by chance or luck. And we gas reach the top, because mama for us must chop. And so things might be getting harder, but we'll keep climbing that ladder. And do not bend down select with the way now, but soon we'll rock that Prada. Because we they pay our deals now. Nobody see us. With a track inside soul, I say now we keep Jesus. When God come bless us, we get money come famous. Because he go say we do yahoo. God go cut that tongue, we see us. <laughs> and that's why we're going through the process and counting our losses. And daring all the nonsense and carrying our crosses. Because it's just a matter of time before we chill and sit like bosses. Where we'll sip cocktail with dango tea and show them who the bosses. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome back. So it's SME Mondays, and you know we bring you some of the businesses uh, that are doing doing their best in an economy like this. And Olua Femi Opoluwa is the brains behind Olua Femi Clothing, a menswear fashion brand that manufactures retail clothing 
uh, for the working class in Nigeria. And uh, his products include uh, suits, shirts, ties, and anything to do with guys, uh, basically, and what they need uh, to have weddings or uh, at work, whatever it is. Anyway, so he's joining us this morning, and uh, it's good to have you looking sharp and dapper I mean, in uh, your you Olu Olu Afemi clothing. Is that's, that's what it's called, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and you started this uh, many years ago, over a decade ago. Yeah. And, you know, so tell us this journey. Because sometimes, you know, it, it's, it's easy to see the success and to say, oh, wow, this guy is doing so well now. I wish I could be like him. But you, it's also nice to have the backstory. Yeah. Okay. Um, started business about officially like 13 years ago, but unofficially, like 16, 18. Mm. Um, when I finished from university, I had an extra semester and uh, I couldn't go back home to tell my parents that I'm not graduating this year. So <laughs> I had to, okay, you know what, I've always wanted to do fashion. Let me just try my hands on it. And then I tried my hands on it and the money never stopped coming. Hmm. And I was like, okay, I can do this for a living. Wow, that, that's amazing. And, you know, so you started, uh, there's something that you said which, which I thought uh, was instructive when, when you said that when you started, um, you had this problem with keeping up with consistency in quality? Yeah, um, it's actually a universal problem in a continent like Africa because mm -hmm. really we really don't have that structured manufacturing and structured production. So you find a situation where a customer comes in on Monday, he buys a shirt, and then he buys the same shirt on Wednesday. The sizes are not exactly the same. It's, mm. it's a problem. Yeah. It's a problem. So, so it's a big challenge. And of course, now, I mean, when you do, uh, when you were expanding the business, you saw that it was important for you to then maintain a certain kind of quality. quality yeah. So what did you then do then? Oh, at that point, we just decided, okay, do you know what? The things we cannot produce in Nigeria anymore, let's not produce them here. The ones we can produce, let's produce them here. Mm. Because the reality is that your brand is actually just as good as that consistency. If you're going to buy a certain, say, car, for example, there's that expectation that you have. If you go there tomorrow, it should be the same thing. If you go there next week, it should be the same thing. Mm. But where you have um, inconsistency in quality, in sizing, it's, it, it destroys the brand you're trying to build. Yeah. Have you ever sought um, financing uh, from, from external sources? Because I, that, that's a question that people it's ask. It's a big, like, okay, so Nigeria, the fashion industry in Nigeria is so big, but I don't know why. Nobody seems to understand how big it is. So really getting finance is a major issue. Like nobody still believes in what you do. So all of the growth we've had has always been organic. Mm. Like you just make a little money here, pour the money back in, make a little, pour the money back in. So you've never had to then say, okay, this so, is our no, business plan. Uh, give us 10 million, give us 20 At million. the very beginning, I did a lot of that. I had a business plan, shopped it around with a couple of banks. Some didn't even listen to us, some they did. However, this year, I think the banks are now beginning to throw money at you because you have the accounts officers calling you and telling you, oh, we have this fashion thing for SMEs. Yeah. We have this. So, like, I think the landscape is beginning to change. To, to change, which, to which, change. Is, which is really, really it's important. A good thing. And it's thanks to guys like you that <laughs> I, sort yeah, of... Because one, they say, yeah. oh, this guy has been doing this thing for all these years and he's not dying. Maybe <laughs> so there, there must be something there. Did, yeah. There must be something there. And lo lots of guys are also coming, in, coming into the space as well. Um, so, now, let's talk about the market and the kind of people that you target and the response that you get from from the, from these guys because you I mean you make everything you make socks you make ties you make uh, you make uh, the suits themselves shirts pocket squares so uh, who are the guys that you that you're talking okay, to? so when we started out we had we, we wanted to just design clothes and sell them but later we realized that the buying customer had a nine-to-five hmm. if he has a nine-to-five he wears a certain type of clothes so um, Realizing that, we realized that, okay, you know what, we need to fine tune the business. So, okay, why don't we just have a brand that is tailored towards just the working man? Because really, people need to wear clothes to work. Mm. It's as simple as ABC. They have to eat, they need to leave, they need to wear clothes to work. So, we decided, okay, you know what, let's cut out the design. Let's just focus on selling working class clothes. And it's been fantastic. Like, it was a turning point, really. Well, like, the results were immediate. You didn't have to wait four or five years to see, oh, is this working or not? It was instantaneous. Mm. That's amazing. That's amazing. So, uh, are your clothes expensive or affordable? Because sometimes people say, "Oh, we're in the premium space. Our suits are 150,000." I think that you, I think you, anybody that does that, person, this is my personal opinion. I think anybody that does that in a country like Nigeria, you're not being realistic. Like honestly, how many people can afford 150,000 for you? So let's let's be realistic. Yeah. yeah. Not a lot of people. So we design everything we do from the jump off. We know. Look, it has to be affordable. 
is the, this is the end before we even put cloth on paper we think about it okay how much would the customer buy it for mm. so when you design and manufacture with that mindset it makes you cut out all the unnecessary stuff because really at the end of the day if you don't sell them you're not going to make money yeah true 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 there's one thing that that i i always like to ask entrepreneurs because sometimes um entrepreneurs are optimists you're always thinking about the possibility oh we can make money from yeah, here okay. but really you know sometimes nobody sees it sees the time when you when you're shedding tears or when something breaks down and uh you have to fix it or you have to dip into your finances to do things like that you know so the the major issues that you faced at the beginning of course those are those are behind you now but now when, now that you're bigger what are the major issues and what are the things that you feel should be done it would always be finance because in the business like fashion you can never have enough money like you can never have enough you can never have enough money hmm. so it would always be finance and knowing okay do you know what we need 10 million for this but we don't have 10 million can we make it work with 2 million can we make it work with 1 million and then you realize that quality though a lot of times not necessarily no most times once you remove your ego from the equation everything becomes very clear okay so you want to buy a suit from me i want you to take receive the suit in a certain type of bag i want the suit to have a certain type of packaging you're not wearing the packaging you're wearing the suit hmm. Once you start to think like that, you, you cut out a lot of unnecessary things. And really, price points would always be there. But if you understand what you're trying to do, you will find a way. Hmm. You would always find a way. That I've learned in this business, you'll find a way. Hmm. You'll always find now, a way. Now, with, with regards to, I mean, you, you talked about the industry opening up and banks chasing you with money now uh, and things like that. But how about the regulatory space, the government? Is there anything they've done in the last, say, five years of your business that you feel okay? Uh, somebody has responded to my needs. Absolutely need. nothing. Absolutely nothing. A lot of times I look at okay, so because three days ago somebody was telling me about the fashion industry, something, something that um, yeah, bank of CBM. industry, yeah. yeah. And I looked at that thing and I laughed. I'm like, do these guys have people in this industry on their side? Because obviously they don't like. You need to, basically, it's like me sitting down here making laws for people that live in Ajegule. I don't live in Ajegule. I don't know the realities in Ajegule. Mm. Like, you need to be in that environment to understand, oh, this is the pain level of these people. This is what they need. This is what they don't need. Say, for example, I, need, I think that to get the fashion business, the fashion industry running in Nigeria properly, you need to have technology parks, parks where people can just go to produce garments. Mm. In all honesty, no brand in Nigeria and no brand in Africa can actually afford to own a world-class factory, none. Nobody has $4 million to invest in a factory, none. Hmm. So it's something that you'd have to do, okay, do you know what? This is what this industry needs, let's put it in place. You guys, okay, we've set this thing up, you come, you use it, you pay a certain amount of money. That way, gradually, hmm. things start to change, the level of quality will start to rise, and then production starts to come in. Foreign brands abroad go to Egypt, Egypt to produce clothes. Hmm. And Bangladesh and, and a number of all, all these so other really, probably we, third we, world countries. All yeah. we just need is to have these things in place and the ball will start rolling. But no single individual can do it, none. It's wow. not possible. Amazing. I mean, you're giving us some insights into, into this world of business. And uh, Oloa Femi, Okwe Oloa, thank you so much uh, for joining us on the show. And I know that a few uh, budding uh, fashion uh, entrepreneurs are, are watching this and saying to themselves, hmm, I want to find out more about this guy. How can I find you on Instagram? Um, Oloa Femi Clothing. Oloa Femi Clothing. Yeah. And uh, send him a DM. Maybe he can mentor you. But at this point, I'm going to be taking you to the kitchen. And uh, something special, very special happening there. I'm sure you've been observing. Uh, yep. And we're gonna, just going to see what these guys have been up to. By my poor. Yeah. Just have pork. a seat over here. Yes. Yes. My now, this <laughs> dapper gentleman is uh, all of him. Just have pork. a seat. Oh, no. Thank you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, Chef Ume here made a special um, soya. It actually has soya special jollof. Soya special jollof. Yes. And it's special because. It has the chef Ome touch. Yes. Mm. So quickly run us through how you achieved this. Lots went into that. It's okay, very so red. Basically yeah. all natural ingredients. Bell peppers, carrots, fresh paprika, fresh tomatoes, soya spice made by me. My sesame curry mix made by Tuari girl, of course. So <laughs> then rice. And that special pot. And yeah, it's oh, sale coco. Oh, you made in that? Yeah. yeah. It's sale and coco. interestingly, all <laughs> the ingredients she used, she made them herself. Yeah. Oh, wow. So she didn't use seasoning cubes, all yeah. her 
natural made stuff. Uh, can, I, can I ask a question? Yeah. Okay. Why do you guys always serve the food in these tiny portions? Like, yeah. it's always like, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm hungry now. We're trying, <laughs> to, <laughs> we're trying to be, you know. Uh, please yeah. have January. a taste. Please have a taste. Yeah. Was, oh, it's January. I like January. that. <laughs> Jera is uh, lean. It's very yeah. lean. So what do you think? Think? I can finish it. Yeah, sure. Sure. Oh, I'm sorry. Right. Right. Thank you. Wow. What do you think? What do you oh, think? Wow. He loves it. He loves it. it. I, I, I've answered the question. <laughs> <laughs> <Can I finish? laughs> All right, then. Thank you. And with that, uh, we have to say a big thank what you to our it? chef. And it's, uh, it's from Willow Saver. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Willow Saver. Yeah. Nice, nice, thank nice. Thank you. All right. So, mm -hmm. big thank you to our friends at. Homely NG for the kitchen yeah. accessories. Yeah, and a big thank you to all our guests for joining us on the show today. We oh, have been Mike motivated and inspired <laughs> yeah. by all of them. And uh, yeah, we're yeah. going to be back again tomorrow on the show. 6 a.m. Have a great day, everyone. Have a great day. Bye. Bye. <laughs>